Hello, everybody. Thanks for attending our webinar today titled Connecting Data to Recover and Rebuild Businesses. Uh, whether you're joining us now or picking this up later on, we're glad to have you. Uh, I am Brad Fritz. I lead the IBM uh, portion or co-lead the partnership that uh, IBM and Vodafone have together with my colleague Vatsa, who will speak later on. Um, as perhaps some of you are aware, Vodafone Business and IBM joined forces a little over a year ago, really started talking about this a little over two years ago, um, to bring together to our customers the best of multi-cloud capability, multi-cloud delivery, as well as connectivity in something that we believe is a unique venture that will help businesses into the digital future. Uh, as we started this up, there's been huge changes. Obviously, we're all dealing with COVID-19 and the impacts of, of that on everyday life and businesses specifically. As we were reflecting on the partnership, we thought it would be a good idea to check in with some folks external to ourselves to see see whether this vision of bringing cloud and connectivity together makes sense to see marketplace customer us. Uh, for that reason, we spoke to uh, Forrester, what they had on, on the topic. And we, uh, result Forrester, have done some, some analysis, some work. And that's what we'd like to share with you today. Uh, if you look at the presentation, uh, as I said, I am Brad. I am uh, kicking this off. I will hand over to Dan Beeler from um, from Forrester. And then after that, uh, Vatsa and I will just share a few reflections uh, uh, based off of what and, and what we're seeing. There will be an opportunity for Q&A at the end, so we're, we're happy for you to all uh, join in that and, uh, and and ask questions as you see fit. And so with that, Dan, I will hand over to you and let you share your knowledge with, uh, with everybody that joined us today. Great. Many thanks, Brad, and a warm welcome from my end. I'm Dan Bieler. I'm an analyst at Forrester. And today I'd like to share with you some of the findings of research that we did together with IBM and Vodafone. And also, of course, some of the insights that we have in discussions with customers around the world on the issue of the benefits that uh, integrated cloud and data connectivity solution can provide. As part of the role that I have at Forrester, I work a lot with CIOs, CTOs about their strategic business imperatives. And we very often see that it's this triangular combination of data, of cloud, solutions and connectivity that is at the heart of the digital transformation activities. Now I'll talk about three issues more broadly speaking. And one relates to the fact that um, cloud and data analytics really depend on quality connectivity. I will then talk about the issue of cloud and data analytics driving business outcomes and finish off with a couple of indications, observations of how you can prepare the infrastructure for cloud and data analytics. If we move on to the first section, um, I regularly hear, especially when we talk to very IT-minded folk, that connectivity that is just out there, it's a commodity. And frankly, um, having also some, some background in the networking space, this is not really the case at all. Connectivity is critically important to all sorts of connected solutions out there, whether it's connected assets, whether it's IoT type of solutions, and very importantly, of course, for the cloud trend that we see, and cloud is booming right now, in particular in the wake of COVID-19, we see a big shift towards cloud-based solutions and data analytics, and both really depend on quality connectivity. And what we see is that businesses view quality data infrastructure, as well as data security as a key for delivering great customer experiences and, sell, and sales growth. This is reflected in some of the survey um, findings that I hinted at earlier on. And we asked companies for each of these initiatives, and you see them listed here, how important is it to set the right data infrastructure, security, and management cycles in place. And we see here the answers for critically and 
highly important combined. And we see it clearly that it's really uh, the essential tool, the essential infrastructure for improving customer experiences and um, becoming better in, at collecting and using data and growing revenues where we see the importance of having the right data infrastructure and the right data security systems in place. We then asked companies about their cloud services. And here we see that businesses see cloud services as very positively impacting innovation, customer engagement, and of course also lowering the cost base in many instances. And we asked to what extent um, have cloud services positively impacted the following kind of initiatives. And we see again the percentage of firms that are reporting a significant positive impact. And we see um, in, 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 at the very top of the findings here that it's the ability to support innovation capabilities, to um, drive engagement with customers, and also to lower the cost base and also drive business sustainability as critically important elements regarding the cloud services. Thirdly, we looked at the issue of connectivity. And here we see that cloud solutions and data analytics rely on good connectivity for great user experiences and operational efficiency. And I would say that all of us over the last few months, as we have been working from home, at least um, most of us, I would assume, we occasionally had issues with buffering, with poor connectivity. And so this is a, an issue that is clearly going to be very much on the agenda of technology decision makers and business leaders, because as more people will continue to work from home in a more flexible context, this is an issue that you need to take into account as you're rolling out your cloud solutions and your data analytics capabilities. Similarly, we probably have done a lot more online shopping, and so we are experiencing omni-channel shopping differently from what we would have done maybe a, a year ago or two ago. And so it's critically important, again, to support the connectivity component here to ensure great shopping experiences from an omni-channel perspective. We also see that customer journey mapping is very important where we might interact with a retailer via some video multimedia type of solutions where we maybe use some um, virtual reality, augmented reality components. In some countries, this is certainly taking off. We see the development of new value propositions where there is a different form of customer engagement, where there is a different form of asset tracking in managing supply chain. So there are a lot of new types of issues popping up as we engage with customers, with suppliers, with our ecosystem partners that rely on the combination of connectivity, supporting cloud solutions and data analytics. We then looked at the issue of where do we collect data? Because data will not just come from smartphones. Smartphones clearly will play a very important role. Data will not just come from connected PCs. There are many more connected devices. And we separated these devices into employee facing devices, internal data sources, if you like, and the customer data sources on the other hand. And we see that businesses recognize the power of connected devices for their data strategies because these new devices are really critically important for um, collecting the data. Um, smartphones in the employee space are very important. We see that in this space, um, the, the issue of um, wearables, for instance, connected glasses, headsets, and the likes are very important gloves even in the manufacturing space we see industrial iot sensors and we see also um, the issue of augmented and uh, virtual reality as as very important components or devices that support this for instance in the field services space if we look at customer data sources at the very top um, we see smartphones followed by um, digital um, um, payment systems, for instance, in the mobile space, 
We even see facial payment services. And then we see, um, of course, also increasingly the connected car as a very important source of customer data. If you bring these two different data sources together, um, the real magnitude of the impact of having a solid solution that combines connectivity with the cloud services and the data analytics really comes into play as we move into issues such as customer journey mapping, customer lifecycle uh, management and the likes, because this is critically important for managing your customer engagement and driving great customer experiences, making sure that you can differentiate your services from those of your competitors. Now with this, I'd like to move on to the second part of my presentation. And this, and this looks at cloud and data analytics and how they can drive business outcomes. Now, what we see in a, at a very high level is that there's a shift happening from selling classic products towards increasingly focusing on selling products where you have a service layer wrapped around them. The classic um, product sales, um, they are increasingly commoditizing. If we look at um, the services component, we see that customers are increasingly expecting a service element if they buy a product, for instance. And also, they're prepared to pay for the service. That's an important part because the new value propositions are really moving in this direction. And so we see that, for instance, in the case of a um, software company, um, like a, a CRM company, traditionally, they have been selling the software and the connectivity um, with it. So this is um, the first stage of seeing this shift. As we are talking about selling services increasingly, um, think of a, a Tesla, for instance. It's a product where you have a service component wrapped around the product in the form of software updates, over-the-air software updates that give the car new functions and features, for instance, in the self-driving space. And this is an important observation because you see a similar phenomenon happening also in the B2B space, the business-to-business -business space, where CASA, for instance, they're building machines for compressed air in construction environments. So traditionally, they would have sold a machine that, that produces this compressed air. Now we see that they're selling the machines that has sensors and that ensures that the machine um, benefits from predictive maintenance, the machine is not breaking down. And so it's a different sales emphasis, a different value proposition. Moving forward, we see that more and more companies are now moving to the next stage, and that's selling experiences. Now, let me give you one example here from a train company in Spain. Rente. They actually are buying trains from Siemens and Siemens has lots of sensors in the train and along the track. So it's a connected track, it's a connected train, and Siemens has been monitoring the, the performance of the train and the tracks in real time all the time. Now, this is predictive maintenance, preemptive maintenance, and this is very similar to the example of CASA, if you like, in terms of the value proposition. But what Siemens now is doing is that they are moving the value proposition one step further, and they are allowing Renfe to say, because we can guarantee that the train is running fine, you can now sell a value proposition of guaranteed arrival times to your customers, to the passengers. And now this is shifting into selling experiences. This is a very interesting uh, momentum in really transforming the way how companies should think about developing value propositions that are based on the combination of having a cloud component, a data analytics component, and a connectivity component. Now, with this, let's move on to some of the dynamics that we see in the wake of COVID-19. And here we see a shift, a gradual evolution in investments in data, cloud, and network infrastructure. Firstly, we see that there is an increased interest in e-commerce activities, in particular, of course, by companies that have not had the most cutting edge online commerce platforms before the crisis hit. And they suffered the most, undoubtedly, 
in the case of the, the lockdown of the economy. And many of them will struggle very much in the months going forward to overcome this particular um, this, this handicap that they had. And hence, we see a lot of interest in uh, revamp of their own omnichannel and e-commerce activities. The companies, by the way, that had cutting edge e-commerce um, platforms in place actually benefited from the lockdown. Now, secondly, what we saw is that there is an increased focus on security and business resiliency during um, the recovery from the, the crisis. And this is against the, the ongoing threat from cyber attacks. As we have seen an increased remote working scenario, as people have shopped more and more online, the attack surface, if you like, has become much wider, much bigger. And this has become um, obvious for the technology managers that it's an important area, has always been an important area, even more important now. Security must be at the top of the agenda, and we see this in survey findings. And thirdly, as I pointed out earlier on already, there's a much greater interest in moving faster into the cloud space than um, just a couple of months ago. We see that it provides a lot more flexibility for end users, whether it's employees or customers. So cloud solutions will definitely play a critically important role for the economy of the future. And we see also a lot more interested in artificial intelligence for enterprise network automation, ensuring that the management, the operations of enterprise networks are smoother, more flexible, that features can be deployed more um, quickly, and that the whole operations also become more cost efficient. And then we see, of course, um, artificial intelligence um, creeping into the development of new value proposition. It could be, for instance, the monitoring and analysis of population movements, um, identity management, and similar issues that are um, developing right now. And with this, I'd like to highlight some of the use cases where these three components, cloud solutions, data analytics, and connectivity are coming together. The first one relates to the impact of integrated cloud connectivity and data services on customer experiences. And let's look at the example of digital business, um, for instance, mass customized and targeted campaigns. Here we see firstly, um, mass customized marketing via cloud-based customer data analytics. Um, companies like Sephora, Nike, JC, Penny, Nordstrom, Walmart, have been very good at tailoring their marketing campaigns to individual consumers by analyzing data about them, um, using cloud-based analytics platforms to target um, their customers with relevant information. Then we also see precision location-based customer engagement via centralized data analytics. And here we could, for instance, look at queuing management solutions where you know exactly where the customer is, what kind of requirement they have, um, how long, for instance, it would take for a customer to get through to a particular um, um, serving counter in a banking environment. One other example would be for government, for instance, the Maldives are using this for the immigration departments to manage the queues more effectively. Um, again, overall here, the, the message is uh, integrated cloud connectivity and data solution is very effective. Another example looks at employee experiences. And here I'll pick on the example of e-health and the remote diagnostics and treatment of patients. And we see, for instance, AI augmented diagnosis of patient conditions. Um, the Charité, it's a main hospital in Berlin, is using this for CT scanners in the ambulances. So as a patient is, um, for instance, brought to a hospital in an ambulance, they can already start to and provide some initial diagnosis of what might be wrong with the patients. AI-supported diagnosis of CT scans are happening whilst the patient is being driven to the hospital. And we also see other examples, for instance, in Japan, where they control um, operations 
and um, other forms of patient treatment um, on remote islands via low latency collaboration via edge based computing support cloud services so that the doctor who might be many miles away from the patient can still perform some operations in real time. Now we look at the benefits for innovation and here the, the example looks at the retail segment and the, um, the focus here would be a smart store. Many more retail stores are becoming smarter as we are speaking. And for instance, we see real time based information on stock and inventory levels. If you walk into a retail store, you want to know which size of shoes, for instance, are available. If they're not available in this store, where else could I maybe pick them up on my way home or after work? And Adidas is using this in their new showcase stores around the globe to provide the customer with very innovative forms of engagement. And, and this provides also, of course, a better customer experience. Another example relates to cloud based facial payments where um, the payment operations are managed, of course, um, via cloud platforms. There are connected cameras in the store and you pay via looking at the camera. So in China, for instance, WeChat Pay is using this. They have launched a, a service called Frog Pro and customers can just walk up to the camera and pay by looking at it. Um, some of the um, uh, metro stops in Chinese cities are using the same system already. I think overall it's about 30,000 stores in China that are using facial payments. So I believe this is a, a segment that is worth um, looking at, keeping an eye on in terms of the innovative, innovative solutions that we see in the retail space also in Europe and North America. And then we see, of course, smart screens for cloud-based contextual promotions. An uh, interesting example here would be do free, that's a Swiss provider of airport duty free shopping spaces. And what is interesting here is that the smart screens, the advertising, the promotions on these screens is changing based on the types of flights that are leaving and the audience that the passengers that are basically going through the particular stores close to the gates where these flights are leaving. And the, the impact is that it's a very innovative form of customer engagement that is quite relevant for the, the passengers that are passing through the store. Now, another example relates to customer experiences in the utility space, in particular, the smart home IoT solution space. And here we see um, examples of data analytics supported in-home security services arrangements where we have DIY security solutions by the likes of Amazon Ring Alarm or Honeywell Smart Home. Um, very interesting motion detectors that are mentioned, uh, that are managed through the solution where you have even facial recognition. Um, Honeywell solution, for instance, looks at the faces that are in a particular room recognizes that the faces are actually belonging to the people who live there or not. Otherwise, uh, an alert is sent out via the smartphone to the, the person who lives in the, the house. And we see also cloud-based home appliance monitoring and management solutions. For instance, an um, uh, interesting one to look at is um, Neurio. It's a home energy management solution where you can see specifically where you spend energy on which devices use how much energy and you can start to manage more effectively when should I turn on a washing machine or um, a, a heater or some, some other electrical device in order to preserve energy, save costs and um, change my behavior potentially. And then the last example relates to productivity as a result of having integrated cloud um, and um, connectivity and data services. And the example here would be um, the more flexible workspace, cloud-based collaboration solutions. We see the emergence of uh, a lot of packaged remote working solutions and the cloud-hosted collaboration platforms, for instance, where you also have 
features like call recording, you have soft phones, you have call records tracking, you have 24-7 IoT support, you have managed print solutions, document management solutions, e-commerce platforms thrown in. So a lot of interesting packages are emerging that are cloud-based where you have analytics components to ensure that the offerings are actually relevant for the people who work with it. And this is an interesting example of how you can really stimulate enhanced productivity with the combination of cloud connectivity and data services as well. Now, there are some challenges. Um, I highlight three main challenges. The first one relates to the fact that businesses are not so great in all areas, of course. And we see in our survey that they're not so good at automating data, sourcing mobile broadband, and data integration. You can see the results of the question here to um, the question, how well is your company executing on each of the following below? And we see that automating data and um, the issues of constructing and exploring options for mobile broadband and securing the data freely across um, business, different business applications is mentioned um, most frequently and clearly um, they need to get some help in order to address these kind of issues. The second challenge relates to um, the kind of uh, benefits that business expect from connectivity, data, and cloud services respectively. And the answers indicate that the uh, companies are still thinking in silos in many respects when highlighting the benefits from cloud data and connectivity. If we look, for instance, at the three top expected benefits from connectivity, we see that it's improved customer engagement, then um, the expo and the expansion into new markets and improvements in virtual communication and collaboration services that are um, at the top of mind here. When we look at the data services, we see that it's better, uh, the, the better customer um, insights, then better operational insights and better risk management. And for cloud services, it is improved employee experiences, improved customer engagement, and then access to external um, capabilities and resources. And we see that, yes, there is some overlap in terms of better customer insights, but the other areas are not yet fully synchronized. And so I believe that a more aligned and integrated strategy for data, cloud, and connectivity would help to overcome this. And then thirdly, we um, see a um, challenge around operational inefficiencies, latency, poor user experiences, and high costs that hamper um, Connect, uh, the, the, the initiatives around connectivity, cloud, and data, because we asked companies um, what are the, the top challenges for cloud, connectivity, and data. And these are the, the issues that I mentioned most frequently. And clearly, um, there, are, uh, there are lots of um, vendors that can help to overcome um, the issues around operational efficiencies, latency, poor user experience, and high costs as you're developing your, your cloud data and connectivity strategies. Now with this, I'd like to move on to the last section. And this relates to the issue of preparing the infrastructure for cloud and data analytics overall. Now, we believe that overall, this shift towards cloud and data infrastructure really requires um, a significant strategic overall on many layers. So where traditionally we saw a lot of focus on price, price centricity, if you like, we see that nowadays the best in class companies really focus in and try to address customer pain points. Where traditionally we saw technology centricity and almost sometimes an obsession with the technology, now we see a much greater emphasis on designing relevant solutions, relevant to the customer and his or her specific needs, desires, and um, requirements. Where traditionally we saw a lot of focus on waterfall type of innovation, so 
an R&D department that works on a new product or service for 12, 24 months and then brings it to market. Now we see a real shift towards much more agile and open innovation activities where you constantly improve the product based on customer feedback, where you experiment a lot more, where the, the innovation is alive and kicking um, as you go along and the product is constantly evolving and improving. And then we see a shift from the traditional product centricity towards a support of services and the focus on delivering business outcomes. Could be specific um, business KPIs that you need to support as a, as a company, um, particular services as I I'm outlined earlier on when I talked about um, the Tesla example, the CASA example, the ANFA example. And if we talk about the go to market and strategic shifts, um, I can see that there is an increasing shift from the traditional sell to and sell through go to market approach towards a much greater emphasis on an ecosystem play and also a self service play where you A, you work together with partners on developing and presenting solutions in a form of an ecosystem, could be an industry wide initiative. And separately, we also see a much greater emphasis on providing portals where, where customers, consumers, and business customers alike can really take certain matters into their own hands and manage the, the customer journey um, according to their own wishes and desires, at least parts of the stages that are relevant to them. And then we see um, a shift from the traditional one-off sale, the product, the classic product sale, towards a much greater emphasis on ongoing customer engagement, where you accompany the customer along all the different stages of the customer life cycle. Now, in terms of the technologies that are required, um, we believe that analytics and automation are going to be absolutely central in the next years in order to drive um, data-based decision-making what we have done is to ask people what essentially are the key technologies today and what do you think will be the key technologies for you in the next two to five years. And we have subtracted the um, key technologies of today from the key technologies that they see in two to five years. And the results show a picture that highlights the, the importance of um, the, the, the analytics and automation technologies, robotics, and clearly indicates that this is going to be very, very important. Analytics very often works together with cloud-based solutions, analytics and automation, if you like, are two, si two sides of the same coin. And so pay attention to these technologies. They are very important today. They're going to be even more important in the years ahead. Therefore, um, the, they, they will come into life um, really most effectively if assets, if people are connected. Therefore, connectivity will also play a very important role. In particular, let me just highlight two types of network technologies. A, um, SD-RAM, um, software defined networking will really be a defining shift compared to the um, network evolution in the last few decades. As the technology is um, progressing towards a network infrastructure where the intelligence really rests in, in data centers and you can manage uh, a network much more effectively in a software-based fashion, a virtual um, network infrastructure, we see that there's a much greater emphasis to use SD-WAN for connecting, um, for instance, headquarter and very large offices, and also between data center and remote um, storage um, locations and the remote sites and branch offices. There's a second technology, of course, that matters enormously, and that is 5G. For Europe, we see a significant increase of 5G um, that it takes up um, roughly uh, a third of all connections in the next five years by 2025. It's um, significantly higher in both North America and Asia, 
But even in Europe, 5G will play a very important role and um, you need to look at it carefully because there will be great opportunities for businesses in all sectors as a result of 5G emerging on the scene. But this is a separate discussion um, to be had. Now, in terms of the vendor characteristics that are important for driving cloud data and connectivity and infrastructure, we believe that um, the, the right vendors, they really need to bring a comprehensive set of expertise and skill sets to the table. This would include, of course, competency around network infrastructure, systems integration, cloud management, data management, data analytics capabilities, industry and sector expertise, the regulatory expertise that you need in order to also comply with issues such as GDPR, which will be a very important factor um, if you're managing customer and employee data. And of course, they need to also bring the right geographic footprint. Now, let me finish off by highlighting 10 success, factor, 10 success factors that we see for winning data and cloud strategies. So firstly, everything really has to be framed and based on a focus on business outcomes. Without this, if you are just focusing on technology, you're missing the point. It needs to drive business outcomes accordingly. You need to um, separate um, the issues between business-related factors and technology-related factors. They're both very important, but try to separate them in terms of your activities. They need to be integrated. But on the one hand, if you look at business-related factors, um, focus on business-oriented go-to-market approach um, strategies. Focus on KPIs that reflect the, the customer experience. Try to develop an agile mindset, a mindset that is more experimental, that um, allows for um, getting feedback into, taking feedback into account and improving products as you go along. And set in place, develop cross-functional organizations and engage in cross-functional team building. And then um, drive our experimental innovation culture. This goes hand in hand, if you like, with an agile mindset. Um, this is a critically important um, factor in order to have the adaptive enterprise in the years to come. And from a technology-related um, perspective, align your strategies for cloud and data, um, develop um, uh, integrated cloud data and connectivity approach, um, engage in the digital customer interaction channels, develop omni-channel strategies from a technology perspective, drive cloud automation, and also look at the opportunities for automated and intelligent network infrastructure. And with this, I'd like to hand over to you, Vatsa, to take us to the final stages of our presentation. Thank you, Dan. Really appreciate it. Lots of interesting insights and, uh, and uh, examples from your research. I kind of took three things from your presentation, right? The first one, as you said, um, experience will become an increasing differentiator for organizations, irrespective of which industry, product, service they operate. So it's not just enough to provide great products or services, but it's the experience that you provide that matters as a differentiator. That's the first takeaway I had from your presentation. The second one is, um, in your research, you also found that a number of companies are still approaching this in a siloed fashion. So they're looking at cloud separately, data separately, analytics separately. But if you bring that all together, the 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 value uh, that you can extract out of it is phenomenal. And then the third one to is there are already a number of use cases, real deployments that you can see across industries, uh, primarily focused on analytics and automation that is generating value for companies. So, so that's kind of the three big takeaways uh, I took away from your presentation. Uh, I'm sure there are lots of other insights, but that's that sounded uh, that kind of made a lot of sense to me. Now, um, as Brad introduced, my name is Vatsa. Um, I, I I lead the chat and security business within Vodafone, but I also work with Brad and run the venture we have between uh, Vodafone Business and IBM. And uh, before I joined this session, I kind of looked at the registrants for the session. There were over 200 people who had registered for the session from 38 different countries. And when I looked at the organizations they are part of, we, we, we had a wide range of companies, people that represent very large organizations, 
as well as small organizations. We had a lot of people that form part of a global multinational company, but very small local companies. But interestingly, we also saw companies that are already digitally very advanced, and there are companies that are not yet digitally very advanced. And, and, and if there is one takeaway I would like you to take away from the session is, it's not, I mean, it's the point that Dan made, which is, it's not enough to provide uh, just great products or great services, irrespective of the industry you live in, but it's also the experience you provide your customers and employees. And increasingly that experience is a digital experience. I mean, look at ourselves, right? I mean, in the last three months, I haven't moved out of this room and I've now interacted with customers, partners, we've onboarded new employees. So everything I do today is in a way digital. Things that we would have not visualized as a digital interaction or becoming digital. And, and it's not enough for us to, I mean, yes, the digital experience that you provide to your customers and your employees is massively critical. And therefore, you, you need to be, as an organization, you need to be able to bring together the digital touch points that you have with those stakeholders. You need to be able to bring together the infrastructure. In, in today's context, that infrastructure could be a cloud infrastructure, it could be a legacy infrastructure, it could be things that are increasingly moving towards edge. So you need to think about that. And then how do you provide a secure and integrated connectivity layer that allows you to provide great experience? And, and, and that, that's probably the way to think about it as you go forward in your digital transformation. And if digital transformation was already at a rapid pace in the last three, four years, I think the pace would just double or triple over the next three to five years, especially post the COVID scenario. So I think we all need to kind of uh, fasten our belt and get used to a much higher pace of transformation as we go forward. I want to bring, uh, bring to life one of the examples of how you could bring together connectivity and cloud to deliver exceptional experiences. Um, obviously, within Vodafone over the last uh, couple of years, we've invested massive amounts of um, massive amounts of money in deploying 5G infrastructure uh, across Europe. But, but when you bring together that infrastructure with Edge, uh, Edge here is essentially de deploying cloud at the end of the edge, at, at the end of the network. You can deliver exceptional experiences. And here, the exceptional experience is essentially in the form of low latency applications, whether it's analytics or digital uh, digital experiences. Uh, historically, if applications had 60 milliseconds as the latency, with this combination, now you can deliver 10 milliseconds. Imagine the kind of benefit it would deliver to companies that are automating their plans. Or, I mean, if you're a gamer, imagine the experience that you would gain as a gamer, right? Uh, well, I don't play a lot of video games, but one of my friends told me, about 40 milliseconds, you get a headache. Uh, as you get to 10 milliseconds, it's a real life experience. So, so, I mean, as you kind of embrace augmented reality or virtual reality, low latency will become a massive um, benefit for, for our customers, which is why we kind of said this partnership between Vodafone and IBM makes a lot of sense. We are able to bring together our strength in connectivity uh, as well as in IoT, and then leverage some of the strengths of IBM in the multi-cloud space and bring that together to, cus to customers. And I, as Dan said earlier, a lot of companies are still thinking of digital in silos in terms of the endpoints, in terms of the infrastructure, in terms of the connectivity. But if you want to deliver exceptional experience to your customers and employees, you need to bring them together. Um, there's one example that I probably would like to close with. As we were thinking through COVID and in, in fact, how do we help our customers and businesses return to work? Over the last six weeks, the two companies have been working together to bring this to life, if I may say so. So what you see on the screen is a video analytics example, right? As you imagine you're walking into a big, your office tomorrow or into a big stadium or a big retail store. You want to be sure that you have the health and safety assured in that location. So traditionally, you would have had a reception. You, in the future, you could have a mobile concierge through which you can check into any particular facility. And by checking into that facility, you can directly check on your own mobile 
what's the social distancing score in this facility? What is the crowd density? Is it a safe place to be in? Are they sticking to the occupancy restrictions that we need to put in place? Uh, if, if face mask is a compulsory requirement in that facility, are people adhering to those guidelines? And if you have any questions, you can automatically uh, use an AI assistant to, uh, to say, okay, what, what do I do in this specific scenario? So the two organizations worked on this in the last uh, six, seven weeks and have brought to, brought to life the solution. And, and we do believe that it will be massively relevant for companies as they return to work. So that's essentially what I had. Uh, I'll hand, hand it over back to you, Brad, if you want to add anything on the IBM work on partnership of some of these uh, areas we work together on. Thanks, Vata. I, um, yeah, no, it, 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 it's all good. That makes sense. Um, and, and look, you, you know, I think, I think, I think what you're saying there makes a lot of sense and it does tie in nicely to what Dan shared with us. So, so I think it's very positive. Um, for those of you who are listening in, you do have the opportunity to ask questions. There will be something on your, your, your pane or your screen that will allow you to ask questions. Uh, and if you'd like to, please feel free to do so. We are happy to answer them. Um, I see we have a few already. Um, and Dan, if I could maybe pass this one to you, um, Somebody asked, my IT networking teams are separate. How should I tackle organizational structures? Dan, do you have a view on that? Um, sure, yeah, it's, it's actually a very common issue and it's, a, it's rooted in, in history, so to speak. And what really helps, what we see helps is that you bring people from both teams together, you, you explain the, the overall business objective, the business outcome that you want to obtain, you make it more transparent. Why does one element like IT depend and benefit from connectivity? Similarly, you tell the connectivity, the network managers, why connectivity is important for particular IT solutions, what kind of KPIs must be met that are not just technology KPIs. So it's really about bringing people together, sharing the overall objective of the business that helps tremendously. Secondments, um, as simple as it sounds, sending an IT person into the networking team for one month, two months, helps tremendously and the other way around as well. So it's really helping both parties to understand each other's world, because as we know, anyone who worked in technology knows you're either on the networking side or, or on the IT side. And it's time that we finally we come together much more so than what has been the case in the past. All right, Dan, thanks for that. Thanks for that. Um, um, I've, I've got another. Um, uh, so a question here, and, and Vata, maybe for you, the last slide summarizes uh, some of the solutions. Question whether or not these have been successfully monetized. Um, I mean, I, I think that's the key there is that th those are, I, I think we do believe that we've looked at the business cases and believe those do add value associated with those for the individual customers that we've um, previewed them with and started them with. Uh, I believe that has been the case, Vatsa, correct? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, there's two particular use cases that are getting a lot of traction as I see it, right? One is around the video analytics um, in the current market context. And the second one is around location analytics. Uh, I think pretty much everything we do is on a, in a video format today. Uh, and you can therefore see why that's becoming an increasingly critical use case. The second one is the location analytics. And I've seen at least, uh, an, I've seen a new number of projects. I mean, how, how quickly it's going to accelerate in the three, next three to six months. But I just see a lot of momentum around those kind of use cases. All right. Thanks, Patsa. Thanks. Um, uh, another one here, uh, what are the benefits of a managed service or managed cloud services? 
Dan, is that something you'd like to chime in on? Sure. Um, firstly, of course, this is increasingly important because we see more and more companies, tech leaders, business leaders driving business into the cloud, application landscapes, customer engagement management solutions, knowledge management, you name it. Things are moving into the cloud and accordingly the cloud becomes more um, important. It becomes also more complex, but most businesses are not about the cloud per se. They want to support their customers. They want to do business. They want to come up with innovative solutions. So managed cloud solutions effectively are very interesting because they support the business leader requirements in terms of being able to focus on supporting their business, not just the technology demands. They help the companies to develop and uh, address the metrics that really track the performance against business objectives. And they also um, provide some custom-made offerings for scaling up and down operations. So it's a combination of many very interesting aspects that um, make um, the cloud solution so attractive for business. And if you need some external support, managed cloud solutions are, are very good an interesting way forward. And we see a great deal of interest in managed cloud solutions. Okay, Tim, thanks for that. Thanks for that. Um, I've got another one here. I am concerned that such a big project won't give me an ROI in the short term. How would you suggest mitigating this? Um, it, I, I think from my perspective there, I, I believe that that's one of the values of doing something that links some network and cloud together. I think if you were to try to do those as individual pieces, uh, often they might have an investment that, that, is, that, that stands out relative to people's individual um, budgets. What, what I found in my experience working with customers over the years is that a lot of times it is the, 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 the interlock of, of working those two together because you will have some areas that will allow for an immediate return on investment and other areas that will require investment that is a longer term return on investment. And a lot of times it's those fitting together like a puzzle piece that allows a, a mitigation of risk and a financial structure where they can offset each other to, to drive benefits really you know, often in the very short term, um, uh, it, it, when put together, when linked together. Um, that, that's something that I've observed. I don't know if that's, if you have any thoughts on that, have you, based off your experiences? I think the other thing that always helps in, in such scenarios is start small, right? Prove, prove the benefit to the business and then scale big. Uh, obviously, when you go with big transformation projects, especially in the current context of COVID, you're unlikely to get massive budget allocations. So therefore, um, kind of making it into easier chunks that demonstrate business value could be another um, way to approach this. Good point, real good point. All right, well, I think we've handled a good set of the questions. Um, we're coming up on the top of the hour, so um, I think that with that, we will conclude this webinar. Thank you all to all of you again for joining us. Uh, and, and if you have any other questions or any comments, feel free to reach out to us uh, following the webinar. The question and answer forum will continue to remain open and um, you can reach out to us anytime. Also, the, the deck is available, um, uh, could be downloaded. Um, and, and feel free to reach out to us uh, if you need anything with regard to this topic or anything related to this topic. Uh, either Dan, Vats, or I will make sure that you get taken care of. So thanks for joining us today, and uh, we'll speak to you later. Thank you.